Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. Theokin Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today's Thursday, June 13th, 2024, and here are the readings for today. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verses 1 through 12. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commandment through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his passion by many proofs, appearing to them during forty days and speaking of the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he charged them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me, for John baptized with water, but before many days you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come down in the same way that you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. A reading from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 24, verses 36 through 53. Let us be attentive. At that time, having risen from the dead, Jesus went up and stood among his disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and frightened and supposed that they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do questionings rise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet. It is I, myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit is not flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and wondered, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb, and he took it and ate before them. Then he said to them, These are my words which I have spoken to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things, and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands he blessed them. And while he blessed them he was parted from them, and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple, blessing God. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. So today in the Orthodox Church, we have the Feast of the Ascension of our Lord into Heaven. It's told in two places by the same person. It's told in the Gospel of St. Luke as he ascends into Heaven to join the Father in the, in the Heavenly Kingdom. And he also ascends in the very beginning of the Acts of the Apostles. So in both cases, it is Luke, the Gospel writer and the writer of the Acts of the Apostles, that is telling the story. For us, what is important is it's the initiation of humanity in heaven. Why would I say that? Well, Jesus is incarnate, fully God, fully human. He never loses his humanity once he gets it. So there is before the time of the incarnation, but then there is the incarnation, starting with the Annunciation and going all the way through to today, where he is 
in physical form on earth, but he does not separate himself from that physical form ever. Now, we have Traparia that say that he's all in these different places, but the reality of it is that he's always the Theanthropos from the moment of the Incarnation on. And so his ascension into heaven is not just a spiritual ascension, it is a physical ascension. His physical body is in the heavenly kingdom. He is the first fruits of humanity to have entered into the kingdom of heaven. And even more, when he's in the kingdom of heaven, he bears the marks of his crucifixion. He brings with him what his body has endured because those marks are the symbols through which we have everlasting life. Through his death, life has come to us. So he enters into heaven and he takes his rest by sitting at the right hand of the Father. And there he sits with the holes in his hands and in his feet and with the hole in his side, bringing what humanity has done for him in the form of the crucifixion, but in turn, he using those things to bring life to all of us. Such is the mystery of our Lord's divine dispensation, and to him be glory always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Blessed Ascension, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.